Hello everyone. This is Ankush Jain and in this video we will learn how we can create, configure and deploy a front-end application which is powered by Amplify Gen 2 on Amplify Hosting. So we have five steps that we are going to perform in this video. So let's start with step one. Create a Next.js application and push it to the GitHub repository. So what we have to do, we have to create a new Next.js application in the first step so what i will go i will go to desktop here i will create a new folder um, sample app and or maybe i will do it differently i will first go to my github and create a new repository so what we are going to do we have to create a next.js application and then we have to push this application to github so we are going to perform these uh, three things in this first step so let's create a first new repository and I will select the owner as myself and amplify sample app. Okay, this is available. I am making it public and then I will select create repository. So the repository is created. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clone this repository here, which is this. So I will open git page here and git clone paste so the empty repository has been copied here at this place now what I'm going to do is uh, I will create one more directory here for the time being which is tmp and here I will open this command prompt cmd and I will run this command which is given here npx create next step so this will basically create a new next.js application in that folder I will say yes and the project name is uh, amplify sample app Yes, type is script. Yes, would you like to use ESLint? Yes, yes, uh, no, uh, yes, mm, go with the default, and it will basically take some time and it will create a new application here in temp directory. So it has it started creating the application, you can see it. And once the application is created, we will push it on this GitHub repository. All right. So till the time the application is getting created, let's have a look at the step two. So deploy frontend on Amplify hosting using CI CD pipeline. In order to do that, what we have to do, we have to go to Amplify console and here, which is I'm on my AWS console. So you can just open yours and just search for Amplify. Once you select Amplify, it will take you to the Amplify console. Here I have other applications as well, but now I will create a new application and I will select GitHub. Okay, I'm pausing my uh, this step here because we have not yet deployed the application to GitHub. So uh, we will go back and see our application is created or not. So our application is created. What I will do, I will close this and we'll go back to the temp directory and I am inside this temp amplify sample app. I will copy all the content from here to here except git and will control C or maybe control X and I will go back and move it to here. Now we have moved entire content here. I will go back and delete this temp directory which is not needed anyway. So I will now go and open this in command and we'll open my Visual Studio code with this uh, folder. So my code is here. I will just say yes and then I will open the command prompt or terminal here and I will run npm run dev command to make sure that this application is running it says that I need to open this uh, on localhost 3000. So 
so I'm opening it so you can see the application is up and running this is the next JS application that we just created so what we are going to do we are going to open this and sorry Visual Studio code and I will push the entire code to my github repository so I will go here and to initial commit okay I will just select this and click on commit and push and there are no stage changes so I will just say yes and it will push the entire repository to github and we have already run the command npm run dev to make sure that this is working all right let's go back and let me close this command prompt as well all right so go back to the github repository and refresh this page to see whether the files are committed so we can see the files are committed here and the time is coming as now so we will move to the step two which is our deploy front end on amplify hosting so we have created the front end app and next.js application similarly you can create react or angular application as well now what happens or what we need to do next we just need to go to amplify console select github where our repository is present and just select next now it will basically provide me the apps which i have already provided the permission but if i have not added the github uh, the new app that i have created so i it will ask me to update github permission i will have to go here and i have to use my password here and i will use my password to login and this is the aws amplify i need to provide the permission to this new app amplify sample app here and save next press save so now i have provided the permission to this and let me close this and let me see if i see the app here or not let me refresh this okay the app is not appearing here so let me go back and just maximize this so the permission is not added here so the amplify sample app i think the app is already added here amplify sample app is here okay the permission is already granted so why it is not appearing let me close this out and see okay you can see the app now we can see this repository here and we'll uh, we'll select the branch by default main is selected automatically we'll just select next then you can see it has automatically identified the framework next.js and how does it do it i have already mentioned here amplify looks into package json file to identify your front end framework so if we go in our package json file uh, which is here it checks i mean with the help of the uh, i mean they have written the code in a way that it automatically identifies uh, which framework uh, front end framework we are using so accordingly it will uh, set up the build pipeline for us so it has identified that our application is a next.js application and we have to run this npm run build command and the output directory would be dot next so that's done and what we need to do is we have to create a, a service role so let's create a, and use a new service role or let me see if i have a service role already so i sh think i should have a service role for amplify but if i do not have uh, so um, i think let's go and create a new service role uh, and then select next so now you can review all these things and you can just select save and deploy it and what will happen it will start a new deployment and you will find a new url for your application so you can see the ci cd pipeline is running and you got a new domain and where your application will appear all right so now if we go to the hosting 
and build settings to see how this amplify framework is building our app so if we go to host and build settings you can find that it has created an amplify yaml file so whenever you are making any check-in or doing any commit on this repository it will trigger this ci cd pipeline and it will run the steps that have been defined here in amplify yaml file it has automatically identified that our framework is a nextjs framework so it have it has created this file accordingly and it is doing npm ci then it is doing npm run build so this is basically doing npm install stuff install all the npm packages then it will run npm run build and it will have uh, this next directory as an output directory and will copy all the files and deploy it to amplify hosting so this is how it works and if you want to override this steps these steps then you can just copy this amplify fi yaml file and you can just put it on the root of your directory and you can just uh, modify the steps or you can uh, uh, basically control what build steps that are going to be performed because if you uh, whenever a file is present on your uh, amplify directory here in the repository root level then this file would be ignored and your file would be given the preference all right so now what we will do we will just download this file and this file is downloaded and we will copy this file here on our root directory okay so the file is here now let's have a look uh, at the application so we'll go here on amplify and our application is deployed and if we open this app here you can see the application has been deployed as a next.js application this is the same application that we have created uh, on local so now your next.js application is deployed and amplify hosting all right i will close this now let's have a look how this pipeline worked so we are on this overview page we will select the main branch and you can see the deployments here deployment history this is the first deployment and you can see the build and deploy there are two steps so the build step is basically performing the, all the steps that have been defined in amplify yaml file and the deploy step will just do the uh, stuff of deploying the artifacts that has been generated as part of build step so this is our build pipeline stuff and the artifact have been uh, defined here in dot next directory it will deploy all the artifacts which are present in the next directory to this uh, i mean to a place where this url is pointing it so this is the big that's why this this step is con, you know completed in just 29 seconds while it took for one minute 46 seconds because it was doing all this stuff installing the npm packages and then creating the build and generating the artifact so we have done it and we have successfully deployed our nextjs application on amplify hosting and if your application is not having uh not using aws services or it is just uh, a plain static application then uh, you are good to go because you have deployed your nextjs application on amplify now in the next step what we are going to do we are going to add an amplify support to our existing application because amplify gen 2 is a framework to build full stack application and in when we say full stack it has the database it has the storage it has the authentication all those capabilities so in order to add amplify support in our application uh, what we are going to do we are going to run this command npm create latest now you might ask like how did you get this command so you can just go to this uh, url manual install and on this manual inst install you can find all those things or all the commands that i am using but since i have curated this document so you don't have to go there but if you wish you can go now i will go here and run this command and I will just stop this uh, and terminate. Yes, I will do CLS and I will run this npm create amplify at the rate latest. So once I run this, what it will do, it will add an amplify support uh, to this Next.js application. And what does it mean? It will create an amplify folder here and will put 
entire CDK code in that directory. So it will install a couple of NuGet packages, sorry, NPM packages. So let's understand what it will do in background. So running this command will add an Amplify project to your current project inside Amplify directory. And you can see it will create an Amplify directory like this. It will add auth category, data category, and a backend.ts file, which is a CDK stake primary file. So this backend.ts will have a reference of authentication category and data category. Now, if you want to learn what is CDK and what is uh, how, I mean, what these categories are, then I have created another video explaining about entire Amplify Gen2 stuff. So you can just go and check out that video. I have provided the link in the description below. All right. Now, this is, these are the folders that it will add. So, uh, okay. Now, what additional NPM packages it will install? So it takes some time. So okay, it is asking me where to install. So I just said root. So it is installing a couple of dependencies. Now, um, since it is installing, let's understand what dependencies it will install. So these are the dev dependencies and you can see AWS CDK and CDK lib and construct. They, these dependencies have been added. So because uh, it is basically adding a CDK application within your front-end application and AWS Amplify backend and backend CLI. Backend CLI is used because we, for example, we need to uh, create a sandbox. So we will run npx mpx sandbox command. So all those commands would be supported by this backend CLI package and the backend uh, has uh, the new CDK construct that we use in this CDK application. And then there is a AWS Amplify uh, uh, dependencies which has uh, you know which is an a amplify sdk uh, allows us to access aws services such as s3 cognito and AppSync, other uh, aws services within our javascript code or in typescript code so it has all that uh, stuff in its sdk so now let's have a look whether our dependencies are installed or not so um, you can see uh, a it has installed all the dependencies. It has created an Amplify directory here. And we got a auth folder, we got a data folder, and we got a backend.ts. Now let's understand what is there in backend.ts. Let me close this. So you can see there is a defined backend. So as I said, uh, there's a package JSON and uh, it has installed this AWS Amplify backend. And it has all these new CDK constructs like defined backend. And if you go in auth, you can see there is a defined auth and if you go in data you can see uh, there is a defined data so all these uh, defined data stuff is coming from aws amplify backend now auth uh, so in the backend we have auth and data auth is basically de dealing with authentication and authorization data is dealing with the app sync api so authentication here this would provision a new amazon cognito user pool with uh, allowing us to log in with email and data will create a to do uh, i mean uh, will create a AppSync api and whenever we create AppSync api we have to define the model here so this model will basically we are using a dot model so it will provision a data model that creates a matching amazon dynamo db table so it will create a dynamo db table in background where it will store this content and it would automatically create id and updated by and other stuff uh, updated by created by those fields so we don't have to we don't have to create those fields all right so this this amplify directory is created and this is some this is the place where entire backend will be living for this front end application now uh, we have covered this uh, so we have added amplify support to our application now let's modify our amplify ci cd pipeline to big deploy backend so as you can see if i close this and you can see in amplify yaml we are just uh, deploying the front end we are not deploying the backend but whenever our application is deployed whenever we commit something we want that our backend should also be updated and should get provisioned in aws cloud so for that in order to provision the backend in aws cloud for this front-end application, we have to modify our pipeline. And you can learn about these uh, commands uh, from the links that I have provided here. And you can, you can find the link of this page in the description below.
so you can go to this amplify yaml file which is basically coming from amplify next template uh, this is coming from aws samples so you can just go here in amplify yaml and you can copy this backend part from here and what it will do it will basically run these commands in the backend phase and uh, it will run this npx ampx pipeline deploy and what it will do it will basically uh, deploy the cdk stack that has been defined in this backend.ts file so it will provision a cognito user pool it will provision a app sync api and it will also create an amplify output json file here uh, uh, on your root system so uh, that file you will not see because that would be created uh, in on the build server where where wherever this uh, code would be running so now what we are going to do we have added this now we will push the changes and uh, we'll see that our changes are getting deployed so we have done we have added this amplify directory and we have updated our amplify yaml file all right and i will just go here and added amplify support now I will just go and commit and push. Yes. So now we'll close this and a new deployment will start. So I will close this as well. So now this if you are doing it first time, then it will also create a CDK toolkit stack, which is uh, which is required uh, whenever you are working with CDK. But you don't have to worry about that. And let's let me go to the Amplify hosting, and you can see the deployment has started. And uh, this time, this time this deployment will of uh, will run two phases. First, it will deploy the backend. It will provision the AWS resources. Then it will uh, run the front end stuff, and then in the deploy, it will move the artifact to this new URL. All right, so you can see the provisioning has been started and you can go and check out the logs here as of now uh, They are not appearing, but they will appear in a while and I think we have done it uh, step 4 uh, Meanwhile the deployment is in progress. We will move to the step 5 so since uh, this is good we have created a Next.js application we have deployed the Next.js application uh, to Amplify hosting then we added support of Amplify and then we again modified the pipeline to deploy the uh, backend but what if you do not want to deploy the backend if you are working on a feature branch and uh, want to test your application so in that case uh, you would not connect directly your application with the uh, backend infrastructure of your production application so amplify allows you to provision sandbox environment and how you can do it is you just need to run this command npm and mpx sandbox so what i'm going to do here uh, i will just clean this and run npx mpx sandbox and what it will do it will provision a sandbox environment a similar environment like the authentication and data and it will run this uh, cdk stack and will will deploy it on your aws uh, account and it will eventually generate an amplify output json file as of now this is empty but uh, once this command successfully completed you will have all the configuration here and then you will write this code uh, amplify configure and you will provide this output which is basically coming from amplify output json and after that your application since you have run this amplify configure on your page load or because in layout.tsx you can just inject it like this so what happened we you will run the application this component will get executed it will basically configure your application with amplify then you use amplify sdk everything would work because amplify has been configured initially with the configuration and this time you can see it is basically deploying the stake uh, in my aws cloud or in my aws account and uh, 
yeah, uh, I would be able to, uh, once the stake is deployed, I can connect my local code with my stake. I don't have to connect with the production stake. So that's the benefit of using Amplify Gen 2. Uh, okay, so meanwhile, let's go and check. Okay, uh, the build is still in progress. You can see here build got failed and I don't know why it got failed. Uh, that is a matter of troubleshooting. Uh, there is some access denied uh, error. But yeah, normally that is the procedure. Uh, I have to troubleshoot that why it failed. Um, but that's the procedure and you can uh, kind of uh, do the same stuff. If the build fails at your stuff, your end as well, then you can just uh, grant little more permission to um, your um, your role which we created initially so I, I mean i honestly i have to um, kind of debug this uh, uh, or troubleshoot this error but that's that's the normal procedure uh, considering we have done the deployment i'm more focusing on the step five how we can run it locally so you can see it is still in progress and if i go here to cloud formation and you can see that if i remove this and you can see this is the sandbox which is in progress uh, so this is in progress and if you want to see the sandbox environment you can go here in amplify and you can also go here in manage sandbox and as of now there is no sandbox but it would appear once the deployment is finished so meanwhile what we can do is we can we have run this command to provision the box it will generate amplify output json uh, and once this is provisioned we can delete the uh, sandbox from this command but uh, if we want to configure the amplify sdk so we will just go here and we will create a, a tsx file here and we will write the code this code here so we'll just write this code and i will okay so you can see the deployment is finished amplify output json is there and now you can see all it auth category user pool id and everything is here regarding auth regarding the data you got the url of the your app sync api and the model to do model which is which we have configured in our data api so as of now we have just configured two categories so that's why we are getting the data or configuration regarding those two categories now we are going to configure this and i'm going to remove this code which i have here uh, okay yeah so we can just create one component like this uh, configure amplify client side and we are just calling amplify.configure and passing the output and output is basically pointing to output output amplify output json file and we can remove this and once this is done what we can do we can just add this as a as a new component here in the layout and once this is done your application is configured uh, with amplify and that is connected with the configuration that is present in amplify output json and uh, you have and this configuration is basically pointing to your feature stack uh, or sandbox stack so not the production stack uh, and you might uh, so now this is what you can do to connect your application with your sandbox now you might be wondering how does it work when it is deployed so during that deployment process which got failed in our case an amplify output json is also produced in the application and once that build happens the next js build happens this file which with the production configuration because the same M amplify uh, backend deployment is also happening on your build server so that amplify output json will have the production configuration and that got packaged as part of the uh, build process of next js so that's why the application which is deployed on amplify would be able to connect with your production uh, cloud formation stack so that's how that will work so yeah